guys are you're, you're humbling me. All right, Wine Fluential is here. Finally, at last, the two-year vision comes to fruition today. Yeah. So we have an incredible show for you today with some amazing guests. We're going to debunk a lot of wine myths that are out there. And at the end of the show, you will have a beautiful foundation to enjoy a lifetime of wine enjoyment. So today, I want to know how many, how many people here drink wine? Including, including some of the underage people. I like to see that. <laughs> what we're going to do, the show is going to be pretty quick. We've got a three-minute tasting segment. I then have an eight-minute wine and food pairing segment. And it's going to be very easy for you to leave here today with the basic foundation of how you turn something very ordinary into something very memorable on the table. Finally, we have an eight-minute segment, that's, or a five-minute segment, I apologize, rather, that's called Giving in Action, where you all can see the benefit that you have when you buy wine from Cellar Angels Partners. <laughs> So now the first and obvious question is why a wine show? Wine is very, very important to me. I'm very passionate about wine. Uh, wine does things, I've been following it for a long time, and the thing I like about wine is that it brings people together. It connects us. So whether you are, at the end of the day, having a glass of Chardonnay to say goodbye to that day and welcome in a new day, it usually involves people together with friends, with food, around a table, sharing and communicating and having a good time. The other thing about that connection process is it's the same thing that I feel when we give. And when I talk about giving, I mean giving from the heart, being of service to others. So what we need to do is figure out a way to combine those two things, giving and enjoying wine, and all get connected, and Wine Fluential does that. So this idea started about 15, 20 years ago, and I went out to wine country, to Napa and Sonoma, and I tasted a wine, and I was blown away by the quality of this wine. And I asked the winemaker, where can I get this? He says, oh, you can't get it in Chicago. I said, what do you mean I can't get it in Chicago? We take our food and wine pretty seriously. I think we should be able to get it. He said, nope, I don't make enough to, for them to carry me in Chicago. So I didn't know what that meant. So fast forward to where we are today, and it would astound you to know in a free market enterprise, we literally have six to eight companies that control 70 to 80 percent of the wine you see. So what that means to me is that the best wines being made aren't even finding their way to you. We're changing all that. So when we come back, I'm going to have an expert with us to talk about four pristine wines to give you an example of the type of wines that we feature here on Cellar Angels. Thanks so much. Stick with us. With our Shop Your Way Rewards from Sears, we were able to purchase Craig this excellent multifunctional training device called the BOSU for under $100. So BOSU, in your workout program, for under 100 bucks, check it out at Sears. Hi, I'm Deborah Ann Wool. Uh, when I was 14, I found a note in my locker that said, um, why don't you just kill yourself because nobody likes you. I think it was like a line from a movie or something at that point, and someone thought it would be funny to leave that for me. I used to get phone calls in the middle of the night, people saying mean things, and my poor mother, every time the phone rang, you know, you don't think someone's paying a prank, call, a prank phone call, you think someone's dead, someone you love is hurt. So she went through a lot with me through that. Um, all I remember <laughs> is knowing that what I wanted to do was be an actor, and that if I had that, I could just keep going. And no matter what anybody said, I had a dream and I had something that mattered to me. So that's really what got me through it all. And you know, I found that. You know, now I'm doing what I do love. And uh, despite all of those instances where people made me feel less than, um, I now have a better understanding of humanity in a way. Um, I can now be a friend to the lonely. So just remember that uh, it gets better. If you're feeling alone, confused, or in crisis, please call the Trevor Project at 1-866-4-U-TREVOR for immediate help, or log on to thetrevorproject.org. If you want to find out ways to help create safe spaces in your school, log on to glsen.org, glisten.org. Remember, it gets better. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> All right, as I am wont to do, I grab people with me that are smarter than me. So with me right now to walk us through the tasting of wine is someone who is both an educator and a sommelier, recently awarded the Sommelier of the Year Award, and I'm happy enough to call a friend, John Lalagains. Wow. Okay. You could, you, you're going to see the videos of the wineries that we're talking about here on Cellar Angels. So behind us, you'll see the videos. You can start those. And John's going to take us through the tasting process of wine because it's different than the drinking process. Yes. Thank you very much for having me, Martin. Cheers. Really appreciate it. So I want to talk about tasting. Tasting is very different than drinking. When we go through the tasting process, we incorporate our use of senses, our sense of sight, our sense of smell, and our sense of taste. For sommeliers, for wine enthusiasts, for the consumer at large, there's really two important aspects that we want to focus on. First, we want to focus on the aromas and flavors of a wine. We do that by swirling the wine and sniffing the essence of what we're getting there. And then the second component is actually tasting the wine and feeling the structural components within our mouths. So now the four wines we're going to be tasting and pouring for these folks right here are four Cellar Angels wines that were previously featured. We're going to go with two Pinot Noirs. We're doing a horizontal tasting of the Pinot Noirs. And with us we have Debbie and Curtis that were kind enough to jump up from the studio audience as soon as I said wine. <laughs> so now we have the Drew Family Cellars from Anderson Valley, California. The video is running in the background. And we also have the Cornerstone Cellars, which is in Napa, but it's sourced from Willamette Valley, Oregon, a very, very big and up-and-coming Pinot Noir region. All right, so what we've got, we've got two Pinot Noirs poured, and I would like you, as, along with Martin, if you can uh, model what I'm doing. The first thing we want to do with a wine tasting is swirl the wine, and we want to go ahead and hold it by the stem and swirl it to release the aromatics of the wine. With Pinot Noir, what we're looking for are red fruits, typically, maybe a little bit of black fruit. We're going to smell some essence of bake shop spice, like a cinnamon, clove, maybe some elements of earth, dust, mushroom. So go ahead and give it a swirl, and the bouquet is going to shout out at you and give it a smell and see if you can smell some of those uh, recognition uh, traits that I identified. Now we're going to take a taste. We're going to take a small taste of the wine. Suck in some oxygen. Or gargle. Move it around your mouth, whichever works. And the reason is you want your, your palate to be able to react with the wine. With Pinot Noir, we're looking for something that's going to be dry, light bodied, medium to high acidity, low in tannin, and moderate alcohol. Now, while John is pouring the Cabernet, which is near and dear to my heart, we have two great Cabernets, one from Modus Operandi, Jason Moore, an up-and-coming rock star of a winemaker. His first vintage was featured in the White House, which is very, very impressive. And then Degadillo Cellars, a very small father-son team that had actually been making wine in Napa Valley for years and years and years. They have the unprecedented ability to age their wine six years prior to release. So it's smoother, it's more balanced, and it's softer. And so, John, tell me a little bit about what the typical flavor profile is of Cabernet. You got it. We've got two cabs in front of you, so I want you to take your cabs, and I want you to do the same thing we did with the Pinot Noir. Grab your glass, hold it by the stem, and swirl it to release those aromatics. Typically, with Cabernet, we're going to get much more darker, dense, dried black fruits. We're going to smell uh, associations of a tobacco shop, kind of that leather chair, the smoke, the ash, the cedar box, much more dense. Now, I want you to take a taste of it and see how much bigger it's going to feel in your mouth. What you've got is, yeah, it's a big, Very big. mouthful. <laughs> it's powerful. It's intense. You've got full body. You've got high tannin, and you can certainly see the difference between the two wines, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, okay, so you can see the difference between the Pinot Noir and the Cab. Debbie, the Pinot a little bit lighter? Yes, definitely. And the Cab a little bit bigger. Curtis, any, any particular favorites? Curtis is coughing. <laughs> uh, Cabernet. You're, I like the Pinot. Absolutely. You like the Pinot. Pinot, Ta Cabernet. And so the great thing is that here are these wines that you like this one, you like that one. Ultimately, what are we going to pair it with? That's going to make another totally different dimension here for you to experience. So wine by itself, we all drink it by itself, and I love to do it. Next coming up, we're going to have wine with two very, very easy dishes from our catering partners, Dysfunctions. And as we can show you, you will be able to build the foundation very, very quickly of some techniques to make it simple to go ahead and be, turn an ordinary meal into something really, really memorable. So stick with us. The food and pairing wine section is next. Holy crap. 
Hi, I'm Andrea Metcalf. You know, if your dog is getting fat, you're not getting enough exercise. With the people and pet obesity rates these days getting well over 60%, it's time to start to do something. That's why I've created Paws Pilates. Pilates for you and your best friend. This is Wrigley. These exercises not only work your waistline, but they give you time to spend with your canine. Remember to exercise, energize, and engage with your best friend with Pauzilates. Before you start this or any other exercise program, please see your doctor. And remember, not every move is meant for every dog or every person. Have fun and let's get started. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Andrea and Metcalf. Are you social media savvy? Do you like to go online and watch video content? Or rather come down to Chicago's downtown and be part of a live studio audience? Then we need you. We need your voice, we need your tweet, we need your input. In fact, we need you to be involved with Today TV Live. Today TV Live is a live streaming, live audience, social media engaged concept where you get to be part of the action. We want your voice and we want you there. So if you're interested, tune into todaytvlive.com and get involved. It's an experience you won't want to miss. Hi, I'm Will Arnett. Hi, I'm Suzanne Summers. Hi, I'm an actor. You should listen to me. 85% are the, under the... Yeah, it's funny. It's good. Sorry. I know what you're thinking. Oh, they're going to ask me for money soon. Just keep watching. You want to get racked in the nuts with some stats? Here we go. Malaria kills more than 2,000 kids a day. Still interested? Nice. You're a good person. A simple $10 mosquito net can protect a child. Hitting you up for money in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Text the word NET to 85944 to make a $1 million donation to Malaria No More. What's that? Oh, it's only $10. It's only $10. <laughs> Messaging and data rates may apply. Let's make malaria no more. If malaria was a person, I would kick them in the face. Ready. <laughs> uh, excellent. All right, so this is the seg segment that really astounds people. When you compare food and wine, it really throws it up to the next level. So when I was growing up, I didn't have any ability to pair food and wine. I was the age-old person, white wine with fish, red wine with meat, and that is now debunked, okay? John here is gonna show us, and John is an author, has written a book on the essentials of wine with food and wine pairing, and you can see that book, but he knows all this stuff, and we're gonna learn a little bit about why that myth is old, and we've got two dishes from Dysfunctions Catering here in Chicago that has helped out with this whole segment. Yeah, through years of experimentation and study and practice, I really put together this process of pairing wine with food in a very successful approach. By far the most important principle when, uh, whether you're a sommelier, enthusiast, or the consumer at large, is to make sure that the wine and food mirror one another. The body, the weight, the intensity need to be at an equilibrium between the two. For example, if you were to take a light-bodied white wine, such as a Sauvignon Blanc, and pair that with a big, hearty piece of red meat, Wine's going to taste like water. Wouldn't work. Wouldn't be successful. Granted, you may like Sub Blanc, you may like the steak, and you may find that a fine, fine sort of pairing, but technically speaking, it's going to overpower one. You can turn that around as well. We could say, hey, let me take a big, bold red Zinfandel and pair that with some shrimp cocktail. Problem with that, you're going to lose the food. So bottom line, bottom principle, you've got to mirror one another. Okay, so we have Pinot Noir. So tell me what typically pairs well with Pinot Noir. Is we, they both, Debbie and Curtis, agreed it was a lighter style wine, not as big and full-bodied as the Cabernet. So it's a lighter styled wine, so what dishes typically pair well with Pinot? Yeah, you know, the thing about Pinot, I'm glad we have a Pinot here today because it totally it, it debunks that whole angle of what you were you're, talking about. You're such about. a Pinot fan, too. Red, <laughs> Pinot, Mr. Cab. So red wine with fish can work. So we're talking about a Pinot Noir that can typically go with fatty fish, tuna, shark, salmon. We can also go with coagulated proteins like a beef stew, pot roast. Uh, also, we could do duck. Uh, it has a lot of flexibility and adaptability. So what we paired with the Pinot Noir today, uh, the shot. chefs from Dish Function came up with a salmon, and we wrapped it in a uh, cherry hickory smoke uh, piece of wood that you could 
wrap this up, throw it directly on the grill, and it smokes it while it's cooking it. We have some thyme, we have some lemon, we have some uh, green onions. And folks, this is real easy. You can get this at about 10 different stores. You don't have to be a chef to be doing any of this. this Super is, easy. This is a simple dish, and yet it's going to be delicious. And the idea here is that there's enough fat in the salmon that's going to be able to mirror the weight and body associated with this light-bodied red wine. Please give it a try as we talk it's about. So tell me why the salmon actually works with the pinot. Salmon with the pinot, we've got a lot of fat in the, in the salmon. It's a fatty fish. Uh, there's a certain sort of wild flavor to the salmon, coupled with the fact that we're smoking and grilling it. <laughs> So there's this intensity that's going to be able to have this equilibrium, this mirroring effect. And right now it's the, what I refer to as the summer drinking season, which is grilling season in Chicago. So let's take the heat out of the kitchen and take it outside. Absolutely. And when you pair it, I like that noise. If, for those of you that didn't hear that, she sighed. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of ecstasy. <laughs> and, and by the way, I might say that was a Pinot that she was doing that with. Oh, yes. whatever. Our second dish, if I can have you all give a sample with the, uh, we have a ribeye over here. Well, tell me uh, what types of foods typically go with Cabernet because as we talked earlier, yeah. Cabernet is a much bigger, fuller bodied wine. So it's got more power, more substance. Tell me what goes with well, this. Well, this is a, a classic pairing here with the Cabernet. Cabernet is a big, bold wine, lots of power, lots of tannin, ample alcohol. We need something big. We need big old hunk of Fred Flintstone meat. As big as we can get. We need ribeye. We need porterhouse. We need T-bone. Uh, you could do rich, pungent blue cheese, dark chocolate. So what we have here is our ribeye coupled with a salad of blue cheese. And Ooh. what we've done is we've grilled that uh, ribeye. Once again, keep the heat out of the kitchen. It's outdoor, it's summer season. You can drink red wines with summer foods. Yes. And the coupling of the blue cheese and the steak <laughs> and the intense cooking method is going to go amazing together. Excellent. So take a bite of the steak with ribeye, typically fatty. And the tannins associated in the Cabernet, which comes from the grape skin, actually cut through that tannin. So Debbie, Curtis. Can we uh, have a little feedback on the steak? Go ahead, you can chew. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. Incredible. So can you see if you were to take the Pinot Noir and pair it with the steak, it wouldn't be horrible, but what you got is a better match with the Cabernet and the steak. Something yeah. with a little bit more weight, Definitely. mirroring the equivalent weight in the food dish. Amazing. Excellent. So everybody good on the concept of body of food to body of wine? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Right. Any favorites? I'm, I'm a salmon person. I love the fish, and the, that pinot is just amazing. Excellent. I'll be buying I some. Cross <laughs> I do the salmon with the Cabernet. You do oh. the salmon with the Cabernet? <laughs> <laughs> the salmon with the Cabernet. And, and it's okay. And you know, the thing we always talk about, of course, it's obvious. You can drink and eat anything yes. you like. But in, in terms of what we want to uh, share with you is sort of uh, 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 maybe a different approach of mirroring that weight that's going to, for more people, maybe be more effective. But absolutely. And if yeah. you have anybody out there have any suggestions on food and wine pairings for steaks, you can go to hashtag pound today TV live and let us know what your thoughts are on the appropriate food and wine pairings. But I think it's important to recognize, and I'm going to throw some questions at John Fire Action here. Uh, body is important, so you have a big spicy dish. As a matter of fact, why don't we do that since it is grilling season and the most popular thing we always grill are burgers. Give me an idea of what wines go with burgers. You know, it all depends on how Cheese you cook burgers. that burger. And that's another question. How are we cooking the burger? Are we doing it rare, medium rare, or are we doing it well done? Uh, what kind of cheese are we putting on? Are we putting on something light? Are we putting on something more aged and intense? Are we throwing on caramelized onions? Curtis hasn't eaten in like bacon? three days. He's just chowing down so over here. So depending upon what we're doing with that burger, but we're talking Malbec, we're talking Zinfandel, we're talking Merlot. Okay, so we have a uh, fatty fish here. What about lighter style of fish? Yeah. Turbo, uh, halibut, tilapia, tilapia, all those leaner fishes, they've got much less body, much less internal fat. So now we're dealing with something like Sauvignon Blanc, we're dealing with Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, perhaps a sparkling wine. But you, you notice that these lighter wines, because there's a lighter body of that main center of the plate item. Anybody, uh, Asian food, spice lovers? Yeah. Okay, so how, do you, how, how can you find something to counteract that heat? Yeah, well, bottom line, we've got to mirror the body again, but that uh, we can find a wine that has just a little bit of residual sugar. Uh, some Chenin Blancs can give you a little bit of residual sugar, as an example. Some Rieslings can give you a little bit of residual sugar. As long as they've got the body to compete with the dish, we're looking at a little bit of that sweetness to counteract some of the spice. Okay, so you saw, and John has uh, a couple books, excuse me, 
So beverage manager's guide, but really the book that sets it apart is The Essentials of Wine with Food Pairing Techniques. Very simple, very easy, and one of the things that's very simple about this is you don't have to be a culinary chef. John teaches culinary school, uh, or cooking as a matter of fact, is Cordon Bleu educated, sommelier of the year. So what I want to do is focus on the simplicity of this because don't make it complicated. Wine is very, very simple. Let's not bog it all down with complication. All right, so what we're going to do is when we come back out of the break, giving in action, what your purchases do for the community at large. Thanks so much. Yeah. Hey, you do much of what we learn in this world comes directly from you. Whatever your message is, it will become part of us forever. Please teach us to accept one another. Teach us to respect one another. Please, do not fill our minds with hatred. Do not expose us to bigotry. Do not teach us to judge each other by race, religion, orientation, or the color of our skin. Teach us the concept of tolerance. Teach us to understand one another. Teach us to accept people of different cultures and persons with different beliefs than yours. Please help us to create a world where every man, woman, and child is treated equally. Dear parents, please don't teach us words of hate. We learn from you every moment. If you use a certain word, which might be hurtful to others, we will repeat that word. Please don't show us acts of hate. If you act against people of different faiths, we will repeat your actions. Dear parents, we are your children, and we are relying on you to help us create a world where every person is tolerant of one another. With our Shop Your Way Rewards from Sears, we were able to purchase Craig this excellent multifunctional training device called the BOSU for under $100. So BOSU in your workout program for under 100 bucks. check it out at Sears. Very kind. This is actually really, I think, the most important segment because it's giving an action, and giving is a verb. I talked a little bit about it earlier. This is where we all come together as a community, and every time you purchase something from Seller Angels, you get to pick a charity, and one of our charity partners is here today. I'm happy to have Barbara from the Ounce of Prevention with us today, so give Barbara a hand. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Tell me a little bit about the Ounce of Prevention. Fund is a nonprofit organization that helps to provide um, early childhood experiences for children in poverty. Children are born learning, but our public education system doesn't begin until age five, and that's five years too late for children who are at risk for school failure. Okay, so this would be kind of in line with the achievement gap that we hear about. Yep, there's an achievement gap that actually begins as early as nine months of age, and the average low-income child starts uh, school 18 months behind their more middle-income peers. And when you start school behind, you s are more likely to stay behind. You're likely behind at age um, in third grade. You're more likely to need special education services, more likely to drop out of high school, become a teen parent, or um, enter into the criminal justice system. There are significant costs to society due to the achievement gap, but what we know is that the achievement gap is preventable. Research shows us that if we can begin as early as birth to support children and families, we can prepare all children for success in school. So, excellent. As we do with all of our charity partners, we try to get involved, and you and I had a chance to visit an Educare Center here in Chicago. Tell me a little bit about, is that the only Educare Center or what, we, what you do there? Educare is actually the first in a network of at now 13 Educare schools across the country. Educare is a model um, program for children birth to five. It's a center-based program, and we are providing young children with high-quality early learning experiences. Children are um, engaging with high-quality teachers who are focused on helping them get ready for school. And what does that mean? That means they're having a rich vocabulary. They're having opportunities to um, hear from lots of books. The teachers are narrating the day. They're also helping them um, play. Children learn through play. And um, teachers are helping them learn how to take turns to get along with their peers and follow directions. That's really important for them when they get into kindergarten because once they enter the formal schooling, it's all about taking in lessons from their teacher. It was actually the way the school, at least the one that I was in downtown, that was set up was pretty neat because it was kind of like a square inside and then it was preschool and then all the way on up and the, the children and the way they're just learning 
And that whole Educare Center is kind of like an island in the community. So everyone knows that's where the kids are going to get educated. And there's no vandalism near it, there's no crime near it, because the parents in the community get it. So tell me a little bit about, besides Educare, how else is the ounce helping? The ounce is an organization that is helping children in a number of ways. We are working with um, um, to train teachers, early childhood professionals across the country and in the state of Illinois. We are supporting the development of Educare schools. We are researching what works um, for children and how you then bring that to more children and families. And a key way to doing that is through policy, policy change, and working with politicians to ensure that public funding is going to the programs that will make a difference. And how do you get your funding? We are a public-private partnership. Um, our programs for children and families are funded primarily through public resources, but we use private dollars to do um, things that um, make a real difference. We are using um, Oh, private um, private dollars for thank you. Um, nice. We're using um, private dollars for program innovation, for research, for um, evaluation, and for public policy efforts. So, how can someone, i.e., a wine consumer, help the ounce today? Well, there's a number of ways that you can help. You can visit our website, www.ounceofprevention.org. You can um, go there, sign up to be an advocate, become a champion for children in poverty. You can also, um, when you visit Cellar Angels and purchase wine, you can choose the Ounce Prevention Fund as your charity of choice. So there you have it. Click, go ahead, you can give a cut. The, the, the achievement gap was something that I think that floored me. When, when I went down to Educare and I met with them and they spent 15 minutes telling me about what they do, the enormity and complexity of the problem was I just could not get my arms around it. So that achievement gap, can you imagine when we started kindergarten, if we were 18 months behind someone from an affluent suburb or anything like that, that's an achievement gap that it gets worse every year, correct? Well, yes, child starts behind. They're, they need more attention from the teachers and in classrooms where you have um, maybe half or a quarter of the children who are not at the same level. The teacher has to spend a lot of time working with those children um, just to manage the classroom. And um, all children then suffer from that. But most importantly, we know that all children deserve to have an opportunity to learn and to be successful. And um, parents play a key role in that too. And so our programs help to work with parents to show them how they can make a difference in their child's life. Thank you. So there you have it. Just by drinking wine and selecting the box that says ounce of prevention, you can actually help close that achievement gap. This is where we need you. Thanks, Martin. Thanks. <laughs> okay, you have to. All right, so that was it. Wine influential, very, very simple. We're governed by the concept of the great thinker Margaret Mead. And for those of you that know it, all right, if you can remember her quote, it says, never doubt what a group of thoughtful, committed citizens can do to change the world, because it's the only people that ever have. That's us, folks. We are the thoughtful, committed citizens. So I need you to log into Cellar Angels. I need you to visit Drew. I need you to visit Modus Operandi. I need you to visit Degadio Cellars. I need you to visit Degadio Cellars. I need you to go to CellarAngels.com and buy wine. I need you to tell 10 friends quite honestly. And I need you to have them tell 10 friends and then them tell 10 friends. This is a grassroots movement. We can't do this without you. We don't exist without you. So Cornerstone Cellars, they have a beautiful tasting room down in downtown Yountville. I need you to go pound Today TV Live and tweet it. Get the message out there. This is exactly what we're here for. Great wines for great causes and nothing happens without your involvement. So it's all talk and we all know how expensive talk is, right? It's cheap. So I need everybody to take action. So please do us a favor, do their charities a favor, drink. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> cheers. <laughs>